Hey everybody, Merry Christmas. I'm looking forward to tomorrow's live. Wanted to talk a little bit about some cravings that I've been having over the last couple of days. I don't know if it's because we're back on lockdown or the weather. I, I'm not really sure. But I was craving pizza and so I ordered it and I had it and I'm over it. I'm not going to dwell on it. And I, it's going back to that video we talked about before about Pavlonian conditioning. And if I was denied that craving even for one more day, I'm sure I would have eaten quadruple the amount that I ended up eating or having, you know, other things that aren't so good for me for the rest of the evening. So... Just wanted to make sure that you are aware that I am just as real as you are. I go through the same cravings, the same ups and, ups and downs, um, the same hormone swings, just the same everything. And I just want you to know that you're not alone. And it's funny because I've been hearing a lot lately in the last, I would say probably three weeks, a lot of excuses, a lot of reasons why, you know, they, people don't want to start a new program or a lot of reasons why they haven't been participating or... A lot of reasons why they're feeling down or doing, you know, maybe not necessarily what they should be doing. And honestly, guys, it's it's tough. Like we're going back and we're already basically in lockdown again. I don't know if you've been outside, but it's absolutely insane in terms of busyness and whatnot. But um, the thing is, like there's so many things in our lives that we can control and there's stuff that we can't control. And you just have to learn how to find a balance. At the end of the day, you're 100% in control of how you're feeling. You're 100% in control uh, about negative things, positive things. And I feel like in the last month, I've just been hearing so many more excuses. And it's funny because usually when we pass over like that 60 day mark, um, people really start to develop habits and they don't go backwards and they're like really in it for the long haul. And some of us are, don't get me wrong, which I obviously really appreciate and, you know, respect. And I can't thank you enough because you should be thanking yourselves because establishing these you know, healthy routines are really, really hard. And that's just the reality of it, though. Nothing worth having comes easy. And no matter what you're doing, if you're working towards a new career, if you're working towards, you know, building a family or building a new home or, you know, establishing a new routine, whether it's uh, involved with health or not, it's all going to be challenging. You just have to stay the course. But I just wanted to make sure that each of you know that some of the excuses and some of the lacks of, you know, motivation, they happen to everybody. And it's just really and truly how we choose to overcome that mindset and move forward. And and I, I've said it a hundred times before too, just actually um, negotiating with your subconscious mind so that you have the habits that you're developing are second nature. You don't have to think twice about getting the workout done. And even if you did like say 70% of the workout, it's better than zero. And that's just like... Trust me, like no one wants to be back in lockdown. Nobody wants to maybe not spend their time with their families over Christmas. And we're all feeling the wrath of it all. And, uh, you know, it's going to be quite some time before things start to become, I guess, surrounded by happiness because we have the vaccine to worry about. Who knows gonna, who's going to take it at what point in time? And there's all these other moving parts to it. I'm honestly so sick of talking about it. I could literally puke. Uh, I just choose to not watch the news. I choose to, you know, not speak about it. If I'm talking to, you know, a business partner or a friend or Steve or whatever the case is, because it's just such negative talk. And as soon as you start to like pull down how you're actually feeling and only focus on negative things, it's exactly what's going to happen with the rest of your life and your mood and, and basically your evening, you know, or your day for that matter. And being able to snap out of that and kind of move forward and move past it is huge, especially if you're talking about time management. One of the excuses that I've been hearing from new people that are telling me that they don't have time to work out, they don't have time, you know, to even log on to Facebook, which is bullshit, because most of us are like, on average, we're spending two hours a day on social media. And I can almost guarantee you none of it is business related. It's all just surfing and looking at other people and comparing yourself. And honestly, if I didn't have a business that I needed social media for, I, I doubt I would be on social media. It's such a time sucker. And uh, it's so it, a lot of it is very toxic. And taking a cleanse from it too is also very, very necessary. I know that we're clearly on social media. That's why I'm grateful for it because without my platform on Facebook, it'd be really hard to connect live with you all every day and um, really touch base with you and see if you're you know, doing these videos and doing the workouts. But it's so crazy to me that people think that they don't have time for their health. 
And it's always about being reactive instead of proactive. Um, one of my cousins had a heart attack today. Actually, it was yesterday, I think, evening. And honestly, like he's not that old, but he smokes. He drinks tons of beer. He doesn't work out. He doesn't stay active in any way, shape, or form. He doesn't play sports. He doesn't go for a walk. He doesn't eat well. And all the while, it's just like you're waiting and waiting and waiting. And then when something happens, it's like, okay, now I'm going to switch. Like, when are you just going to put it as a priority, keep it as a priority, and never let that go? Because the more that we continue to push it down the totem pole, the more that you're going to dig yourself into this hole that you might never be able to get out of. And, you know, does it take a heart attack for people to realize that they need to focus more on health? It's kind of sad, but it does. It, it, it's it's crazy to me because it's such a huge, like, part of who we are. And without our health, we have absolutely nothing. You know, and, and this is like comparison. Okay, yes, I had pizza tonight. Do I feel great? I don't. Because my energy is low, obviously there's not a lot of protein in it. It's packed with carbs. There's cheese. I don't feel good. I don't regret having it. Trust me, I don't because I was craving it and whatever. I've reached that point in my health and fitness uh, journey to not have to worry about putting things in my mouth. It's called flexible dieting. I fasted today too, so it's not like I have to feel guilty. And even if I didn't fast, and even if I wasn't necessarily flexible dieting, I work really hard to have what I have in my life and to have this balance and to have good health uh, because I know that it's super important for longevity. It's super important for my own self-esteem, and it's super important for my lifestyle. My mother instilled these values on me when I was super young. I still remember to this day being in high school, Dina. <laughs> I remember I was 14 years old and my mom, I think she was in her early 50s or late 40s. And we would get up every morning at five o'clock in the morning and go to the YMCA before we went to, to school. Because my mother worked at the high school that I went to. By the way, don't recommend that. She was best friends with the attendance secretary. It was a nightmare. But anyways, um, <laughs> my point is, like, my mom instilled that in me. And to this day, my mom is active. And she's moving around a lot. And she's, you know, stretching and walking. She's in her 70s now. But she's still, like, she looks incredible for her age. And I just... I've always wanted to be where she's at uh, in an older age. And it was something that I could never stop. I played sports my whole life. I, I just always have been involved in one way, shape or another in moving my body and focusing on healthy habits. And if I can instill any of that on you, I would highly recommend it. It doesn't matter if you never used to work out before, or eat healthy before, it just matters that you start now. And even I know we're on like day 70 or 71. I, I don't even know what day we're on. But the thing is, like, if you're not starting now, like, when the hell are you going to start? Are you going to start when it's too late? Are you going to start when you have a huge setback? Are you going to start when you like, like, maybe you're suffering right now with anxiety and self confidence and stress. And it's like, I don't know, a nine at a 10? Are you going to wait for it to get to a 10 at a 10? Or are you going to be proactive? instead of reactive. The whole point of this program is to shock stress and shed weight. We know the two of them are absolutely relative. Some people lose weight when they're stressed out. Other people gain weight at an unprecedented rate. But regardless, stress is probably the worst thing for your body. And it's because it affects your mind so much. I remember waking up, you know, for almost five years, it was like maybe four and a half because the first year of my um, tenure with this company that used to stress the crap out of me uh, was okay. I was having fun. I was making lots of money, new friends, new city. I moved. Um, I, you know, I didn't have a boyfriend, but that didn't matter because all I was doing was working. And then I started to think like, you know, a year and a half in, I started to feel all this anxiety and all this stress to perform and all this stress to make money. And, and I was looking for fulfillment in all the wrong places. And the stress started to overcome who I was. And I became a whole, a completely different person. I don't even know how I lucked up out meeting Steve because when I met him, I was a, literally a ball of stress and it got worse, you know, as we, you know, started dating, not because of Steve, but because of my job, I ended up getting a promotion and all this other crap, but it was literally controlling my life. And I changed into somebody that I didn't want to be. And no matter how stress is coming into your life, you have to learn how to keep that at bay. 
You know, I'm not sitting here telling you you need to quit your job. I'm not sitting here telling you you need to, you know, leave your marriage or, you know, find an entire group, new group of friends or cut your family out if they're the people causing you this stress. But at the same token, like how much longer are you going to let stress affect your life? I, I Like I can't, and it's not just like the mental stress, it's the physical stress. Like my uncle, I think he's like, uh, sorry, my cousin's like 51. And he had a heart attack. And you know what? He's going to be okay. But at the same token, like how detrimental is that on your system? And it's because of his unhealthy habits. Some people have heart attacks because, you know, they have a weak heart. I understand that. But at my uncle or sorry, my cousin, I don't know why I keep calling him my uncle. Uh, but my cousin, it's just his choice of lifestyle. And it's not, it's not a great one. And it's hard for me to sit here and, and, you know, feel sympathy in that regard. Obviously, I don't wish that he had a heart attack and I want him to be okay and I want him to be healthy and I want him to, you know, continue being the amazing person that he is. But seriously, do like, what is it going to take for you to take a strong, detailed look at your life? Is it going to be the heart attack? Is he going to continue to smoke? Is he going to continue to drink? Is he going to continue to not work out, eat, not eat healthy? Probably. And it's sad to me. Like, it's sad to me that there's just certain people in life that you just can't get through. And I think that that comes hand in hand with stress. If stress is like at a 10 for you and you're not doing anything to keep that at bay, that's on you. That's 100% on you. And I'm sorry, I know I'm being raw and I, you guys might not like this, but I'm here to call you out on your BS. Because at the end of the day, you're the only person that controls what's going to happen to you tomorrow, the next day, and, and so forth. And if you're letting stress control how you wake up in the morning, how you go to bed, what you're eating, what you're not eating, how you're working out, how you're not working out, everything else in between, how you're treating your kids, how you're treating your spouse, you know, whether or not you are going for your 10,000 steps a day, like you are absolutely letting it win the game. You are. And stress is, like I said, the worst thing on your health mentally. Absolutely. It like is all encompassing. I feel like some of these situations in the past where I've been stressed out, it's literally taking over like 90% of my brain where now I've been able to absolutely bring that down to like 10%. Do I still get stressed out? 100%. Do I know how to overcome it way better than I ever had before? Yes, I do. Because I've practiced it. It doesn't come overnight. And that's the thing about, you know, stress and health. We can't expect to just start something and within like the first, you know, 30 days, everything is magically better. Because that's not realistic. Like how long is it taking you to um, become in this such stressed out state? Probably a really long time. It's like almost like the chipping of the hammer right? Like it keeps hammering away, hammering away, hammering away, hammering away. And it's like destroying you as a person. And you have to let you have to let it stop. You have to put a hard stop to it. Because you're just going to start dwindling away till you know, nothing. And then you're not going to know how to get back even to 50%. Never mind 100. And yes, you can still absolutely get there. But it's the difference between say you gained 100 pounds, is it going to be harder for you to lose 100 pounds than it is for you to lose 10 pounds? Absolutely. It's going to take way longer. It's the same thing with stress. It builds up, it builds up, it builds up until you explode. And then some, maybe there's some relief there because now you've had sort of like a, a an explosion of anxiety, but then something else happens in your life where it's stressful or it causes you to feel anxiety and then the buckets full up again because you haven't really combat, combated the first issue and you haven't really combated, you know, how to get over it. I hope it's loud and clear, ladies, because I really, I feel like even now we, we don't really talk about mental health that much and it's not like necessarily relating to mental health, but it's 100% relating to how you're feeling as a human being. You know, this this time of year, no matter how you look at it, um, is stressful. We're spending more than we should. We're probably eating more than we should, drinking more than we should in a normal situation, never mind an abnormal one like we're going through now. It's stressful. But at the same token, where, how are you going to find the gratitude? How are you going to overcome that stress? And how are you going to allow it to not control your life? Just make the decision. Stop thinking about it and get it done. Stop freaking thinking about it. Stop like convincing yourself that you don't have the power to overcome it. 
like you do 100%, okay? So I'm gonna go into some Q and A. Sorry, I went on a rant because because I I feel like a lot of us really need this right now. So Dina, she's asking asking about decaffeinated teas. Which ones do you recommend? Yeah, um, Arbon actually has zero caffeine. <coughs> Dean is actually asking specifically about them. There's one called hydration, which is really, really good uh, to help hydrate your skin, hydrate your body. Uh, so it's actually highly recommended. It tastes friggin' delicious. There's no caffeine in it whatsoever. The other one's considered like a detox tea. So it has chamomile, uh, licorice root in it. It has peppermint, uh, dandelion root. It's so delicious. I have that very often. I usually cycle between peppermint and the Arbonne detox tea. Uh, every other night just because I like uh, peppermint really soothes my stomach. Now there is some peppermint in the Arbonne herbal tea so you can obviously still drink that too. But yeah, decaffeinated teas, herbal teas are fabulous. Like especially in the winter when we're looking to kind of get a little bit cozy up and warm and there's no caffeine in herbal tea. So you know what, feel free to drink and enjoy. There's another one I really like and it's like a lemon um, herb. Lemon herb. I'll link it up if I can find the box. I might be out of it, but it's so delicious too. I just really like it if my stomach is upset or I feel extra bloated. Uh, lemon water is so good too if you don't feel like tea specifically. Uh, Dina doesn't drink alcohol at all. I've read so many great things about red wine. What are your thoughts on it? Um, Great question, girl. So <laughs> um, I used to be somebody who drank red wine. I can't drink it anymore. It gives me a massive headache and I feel like I'm, you know, three bottles in if I have one glass. It's crazy. It must be something in the tannins and I'm allergic to or whatever it is. But red wine is definitely okay in small doses. I don't recommend if you're someone that doesn't drink, I don't recommend that you start drinking red wine because there's health benefits towards it. It's kind of similar to how people look at dark chocolate. You know, like there's uh, there's lots of different compounds and things that uh, are in red wine that basically they, they're good for your health, but they're good for health in a different way. Like there's no such thing as a, like alcohol that's good for you because obviously it can make you inebriated and then your your focus on your nutrition, generally speaking, goes down or maybe you're drinking and it's empty calories. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter if it's red wine, white wine, vodka, gin, it doesn't matter. It's empty calories. And if you don't drink, I don't recommend starting in any stretch of the imagination because if you drink, it's not going to create more health benefits for you than if you don't. Okay. So hopefully that, that makes sense. Uh, and she loves my post about fat burning foods. I believe everything you recommended, she bought the PB2. How do you use it? You can use it in different ways. You can throw it inside of your shake, Dina, um, just as the powder form. You can also, I believe, um, yeah, you can mix it with water and it actually becomes a peanut butter consistency. It's just higher in protein. Your body is going to be able to break it down a lot faster than if you're most of peanut butters that you buy over the counter will have a lot of added sugar. If you are somebody that has craft peanut butter, bye bye, because it's packed with sugar, packed with sugar. And if you are going to have, um, uh, peanut butter, just make sure that it's natural peanut butter. So you'll have the oils on top, which is okay. You can stir it up. It'll have to go in the fridge. So it's like raw, raw nuts basically that are ground up. Another um, opportunity for you that uh, like for me personally, peanuts really bother my stomach um, because they can actually become a little bit more toxic for you. So I stick to almond butter, but PB2 is an excellent option. It's also got a lot more protein in it than just say your actual nut butter. So PB2 is a good one. I'm glad that you bought it. Let me know how you like it, girl. I'm so interested to hear. Um, you asked about soy sauce. Yes, because I it, don't worry about the fact that yes, it's sodium because if you do gain any weight from it, it's water weight. It's going to go away immediately. Um, it's especially if you're drinking lots of water and staying hydrated, etc. It's just a great way to add some flavor to your foods. I would recommend buying the gluten free one. Um, and I'm just trying to remember what they actually call it. Oh, it's called Tamari. So you can buy this in the health food section. It'll actually say gluten free on it. So because regular soy sauce has gluten in it, but it's a great way to season up your food. I wouldn't recommend using a whole lot of it, maybe like a tablespoon, if that, if you're sauteing your vegetables or something, or maybe putting it onto your rice and add some hot sauce. Um, I think I talked also that sriracha is really good for fat burning too, just because again, it's going to add some flavor with like barely any calories whatsoever. Plus if hot sauce is something that you enjoy, I do recommend it because it's going to raise your internal body temperature and help you to burn more calories. So hopefully that helps with your, uh, 
your soy sauce. Okay. And she also wants to know about apple cider vinegar. How much do I recommend a day? A very minimal amount, Dina. So you can definitely mix it with water. You don't want to straight shoot it. It'll literally make you sick. It's so gross. Uh, I would say probably, I don't want to say a tablespoon in the beginning, start with a teaspoon. If you're not already taking this, you can also use it as salad dressing too. It's a great way. But if you're wanting to use it as a shot, I would do half a teaspoon to start or half a teaspoon, just depending on how reactive you are with your taste buds. And then with a large glass of water, stir it all together and drink that first thing in the morning. Um, yeah. And then it, as you start to get more used to the texture and, and the taste, then you can start adding it. I wouldn't go larger than a tablespoon for sure. Cause that's just nasty. And it's going to raise your, um, stomach's pH level, which is your acidity. So just be a little bit cautious of that. Cause it might upset your stomach, especially if you're doing it, um, every single day, it's really good for you to cleanse and obviously get metabolism and everything running and fat burning cells and all that good stuff. But by no means is it a magic potion. So just, you know, use your use caution and don't overdo it. I hope that helps. Okay. I like oat milk. Yeah. She's just asking me about oat milk. Oat milk is great. I think it's awesome. As long as it's not coming from a cow, I like any type of milk. <laughs> so almond milk, oat milk, uh, rice milk, uh, coconut milk, even coconut milk is a laxative. So just be a little bit careful on that one. Um, but oat milk is great. It's also a lot thicker than normal, say your almond milk or whatnot. So if you're doing something like a cappuccino and you're frothing the oat milk, it's a great opportunity for you. Uh, let's see here. Yes, she did. You did do the PB2 Arbon Cinnamon Shake and Protein Boost. Oh, I'm so glad that you loved it. Oh my gosh. Dina says, for everyone seeing this, I lost about 20 pounds when I started Kara's program and maintained it up and down five pounds here and there. And three years ago when I started coaching with her, Dina, you've done such an amazing job. And I just read your little message a little earlier. Thank you so much for that. And honestly, girl, you did all the work. You just listened, you executed, you stopped making excuses. Dina has a crazy busy lifestyle, much like a lot of us do too. But, you know, Dina is somebody that I've known for a very long time and she's never been one to, you know, like give up. I just, I, I don't even know how else to describe her. She, when she decides that she wants to do something with her life, she goes for it at like 125%. And I'm just so honored to be part of your journey and this, you know, health and fitness uh, lifestyle for you. And you're doing such a great job. Just don't ever give up, you know, and I know you won't because now you're like, it's part of who you are now. And that other girl that we met three years ago, when you reached back out to me, you know, she's long gone in the best way possible. You know, she's, She's in the background there and you are just flourishing in everything that you do. And I feel like your career and everything that you've worked for in the last three years, Dina, has come to the surface. And I'm just so proud of you. And I just love you with all my heart, girl. You're you're doing it amazing. Keep going. 100%. And the reason, too, I just want to kind of address <coughs> the up and down of the five pounds. That means that you're at a maintenance level, which is a really good spot to be. That means that you don't, you don't necessarily need to lose more weight. You don't necessarily, you're not too skinny. You're like at the weight that you should be at for your height, for your age, for your metabolism, for what you're eating and not eating. Um, so I'm really proud of you. And that's mostly water weight. It's going to be probably like two pounds water weight. And then the rest would be just, you know, time a month hormones uh, nutrition, of course, if you're maybe not moving as much. But the other thing I want to point out to Dean is now that you have established, um, more muscle tone. That's also why your body is able to fluctuate a little bit more because you're burning more calories. Even though you might be not necessarily eating the great things all the time, your body is still absolutely metabolizing everything you put in it. So I'm just super proud of you. And uh, I think that's it for tonight. If you're just joining, please go back and listen. I'm talking a lot about stress. Uh, the first, you know, few minutes, I'm sorry, I was kind of trying to wake up from my pizza comatose. <laughs> uh, but that's, you know, just a sign of when you eat not so great, nutritious, healthy, uh, healthy food that you, of course, your your brain power and your energy plummets. But I don't regret it. Don't get don't get me wrong. I enjoyed every bite. I had uh, chicken on it, and what else today? Oh, and mushrooms. It was very simple. But, anyways, ladies, I really appreciate your time. I thought I'd have a little bit more uh, ladies on here, but nonetheless, I enjoyed speaking to each and every single one of you. Have an awesome evening. Please go back and listen to the stress uh, blurb, if you will, of when I first started talking. And Merry Christmas to each and every single one of you. We'll see you tomorrow morning for the live workout, 9 a.m. Love you. Bye.